Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's build, we'll be unraveling even more weird strand setups that you can try while at home and wait for the next season to come. Uh, the following build we have today is going to be using Swarmers once again. However, we are going to be adding the effects of Incandescent and Suspend to the mix so that each time we get a combatant suspended mint action, they will also have to deal with Scorch damage, Unravel damage and Worm damage at once. It's similar to how I did my Arc Fedlings build a while ago, the following is going to grant you some effective ways to deal with large amount of combatants quickly without needing to use special or heavy at times. It's also quite fun as your swarmers and fedlings are going to be enhanced to provide something different like normal. If this sounds just for you, then sit back and let me show you how to go about it the best way. To start, you're going to want to have Weaver's Call, where casting a Rift will produce free Fedlings and deploy any Fedlings on you. You then want Mindspun Invocation to enhance your grenades. Instead of us taking the normal route of using Fedling grenades and spamming them, we'll be using Shout Grenades and also using the enhanced version that has been offered to us. The idea here is that with the given primary solo weapon used, each kill will trigger incandescent effect while also suspending other targets caught within a enemy's blast. From here, they will then take additional damage from Unravel and Scorch Burn, and if a Tango is created, then they will produce more Fredlings, etc. We will be using the momentum to create a black hole of sort, where after one group is caught up within the suspended effect, another group can then be caught as well and suspended as well via our Fredlings, and thus create a sort of chain reaction. Uh, looking into the fragments, Fred of Mine allows users to get back class ability energy from suspended targets. Further continuity, suspense, unravel, and sub effects duration are increased. Further generation, dealing damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Evolution allows Threading to travel further and deal additional damage. The Thread of Evolution and Generation are two fragments that are going to play a big part with how the build can function for longer. With enhanced Threadings, that will deal more additional damage to targets, while Further Generation will allow us to get our shackle grenades back faster. As mentioned earlier with Enhanced Shackle Grenades, our Weapon Finder Blows can suspend targets and trigger a chain reaction in the right areas. Fredlings, of course, will come into multiple areas, and with how fast we can get our wrist back, we can spam them multiple times over without the need of additional fragments or aspects. For the mods and stats section, we have Recovery, Discipline and Strength being the main big three to focus on. Recovery of course being the most important one of the three as this here will work alongside of Thread of Mind to get back fast rifts and constant threadlings at our disposal. Now a tier 8 to 10 will be suitable as we want to make sure this area is always fully packed. However, with how often we can suspend targets and how easy it is to get a rift energy back fast, I would also recommend a tier 7 as long as you make full use of the fragment. I would also advise you to add the bolstering destination mod for the 20% energy it can provide if we use our grenades like normal. If you want to be really safe though, then also add on the distribution mod just so you're fully covered at all angles, but only if you go with a tier 7. Your discipline can stay at tier 7 as well, simply because we have the further generation mod on us that will give us grenade energy per damage being made. This is huge as it makes it easier for us to make full use of our shackle grenades without the need of additional mods or specific weapon perks. At tier 7 though, Passive regen will be quite slow, so adding on the front of focus mod will give you a plus 30 towards your current stat and actually give you a tier 10 cooldown for the duration of armor charges you have. If you can keep a steady pace of orbs of power going, then you can have a tier 10 discipline from start to finish, and this is something I recommend everyone do just to help save mod slot spacage. And then lastly, strength is at tier 6, so we can use it quickly if we are in a pinch or if we need to access a tangle for our swarmers. The only mod I have here for this is the Momentum Transfer mod, as like I said, we won't be using it all the time, but rather when we are in a pinch. For Armor Charged, Charged Up and Stacks and Stacks is going to be giving you a plus one to charge stacks, and make sure that each Orbital Power collected will count as two collected instead. This is going to help with support in our Solar Weapon Surge mods for our primary weapon being used, and then the Time Dilation mod will increase the duration by five seconds extra. We also have the Solar Cypher mod to help with creating orbs of power via our chosen weapon, and then the Reaper mod so that each time we place a rift down and get a kill, we will also get an orb of power created. All of this, along with Swarmers, is going to make the build very effective in large combatant groups you may face. 
Now lastly, the weapons being used will be strand and solo related that fit the bill for the build. For our main primary, we have the BXR-55 with the incandescent perk, and this has become a favour of mine when being used against barrier champions and minor enemies. The damage it does is very good against the more red bar threats, and its range as well allows us to fare very well against a lot of targets from distance, while also using the following strand abilities. This weapon can also get a red border for it, so it can become even more better than designed, but this will require you to farm it and get lucky. If that is too much, then the Staccato 46 can get the incandescent perk on it, and is a well drop, so you have a higher chance of getting it just by playing. The Amit AR2 is another weapon that I highly recommend all players to get, as its stats and perk are great across the board. This can be gotten via Banshee from his daily to weekly refreshes. We then have the Parasite as the main heavy weapon, which works out really well with Strand, and not something I see a lot of people talk about. As Parasite is more for bosses and such, with Strand and how it can suspend or stun targets, the following weapon has a higher chance of landing a shot and not missing by just a few seconds just because said enemy decides to take a walk. With the stacking damage we have going for it, you can go from a small worm such as Threadlings to a nuclear worm aka a parasite within a few seconds, which is neat. So the conclusion of this setup has shown me that using the Threadlings and Swarmers together on their own is great, but they can be better when you think outside the box. The core issue of Fedlings is that without the enhancements that Strand offers, outside of using them, they feel too weak, and Swarmers added on top of them doesn't make them any more better than what players would have hoped for. In many ways, Swarmers are slowly tied down to Strand's subclass and fragments, and if you want to get the best out of them, then you need to lean heavily into them, or else you do get punished. However, with experimentation, this doesn't have to be the case, as the following build shows that just one small change can enhance your experience more. We are using suspending effect to stop enemies from moving so much, which we can then use our threadlings to attack and kill them outright. This can also spawn Unravel Untangled, which our build is accustomed to. But out of all this, we are also applying a Scorch Burn that not only works with Fed Mine effects, but also allows us to spread this damage far and wide when combined with Unravel as well. Just like us using Jolt in our last build, the following will spread far and wide as long as we have Weaver's Transactive. And when you think about it, this has potential to be useful in endgame content if you desire so much. Instead of following what we know, we are instead expanding on how we can make Strand even more interesting on a day by day basis. This is simple but a smart idea as to how you can go about it, and if you want to not use Swarmers, for example, then you could swap out for the Dawn Chorus instead to enhance your Scorch damage output. Useful for endgame? Yeah, but many things will need to be changed here and there for survival. But outside of the endgame, this is one of the off-meta builds that you won't see a lot of, but it has potential to grow. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time, if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like on the sub out here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I've want more stuff like this than I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.